Um, it was a way of life, yeah, but also it was it was a labour of, of, of love, but labour's the wrong word because labour was something you've got to do and it was something you wanted to do. Now, it was not, I imagine for me, I mean, I was educated by Louis B. Mayer of MGM. I used to spend my life in the cinema with these gods and goddesses of the, of the silver screen. Loved it. Whatever Mr. Mayer decided, I was a recipient too. I loved it. And to actually then, when I was working for a living, to actually be paid to see Olivia de Havilland, Charlton Heston, John Wayne, all these wonderful Ginger Rogers and all these marvellous people, to actually go there, interview them, and then bring them back to London to do a show. I got money for that. You know, I mean, I'd have paid to do it. It was a wonderful job, you know. So I minded being woke up in the morning by Ginger Rogers. No, I didn't. Bring it on, you know, and absolutely lovely. It was fabulous, really fabulous, yeah. And she was, she was great, you know. The flight, she came over for Charles Aznavour's life. The reason being that in Charles Aznavour's autobiography, his book, he says that um, the reason he was in show business was because Fred and Ginger movies, that's it. Really. So I thought it'd be nice to bring back the lady who started it all into Miss Rogers, you know. Uh, which of course we did, but on the f she was supposed to come a certain flight, which I knew about, and I was at Heathrow, White Rolls Royce, chauffeur, cashmere overcoat, to meet Miss Rogers and her flight being cancelled. So I got almighty, so I went to somebody at the airport and said, and flight such and such, I said, uh, uh, there was uh, Ginger Rogers was on it, can you tell me if she's Ginger Rogers, does she work here? I said, she doesn't work here. No bloody idea. No idea at all. Anyway, then, I got the car waiting outside and running around like a chicken with the head cut off, you know, in the airport. Suddenly got a tannoy. Well, Mr. Leonard, please report. I was in Terminal 1. Please report to Terminal 2. Went to Terminal 2, told the driver, I said, we're going to Terminal 2. He, he just put me his own way there. I remember when they got there. There was a sea of people, and I saw a sort of mink coat with a bit of jitten blondy hair flying at the top of it, you know, fought my way through, uh, Ginger Rogers, naturally, so I said, oh, Mr. Leonard, she said, I'm so glad to see you, she said, they cancelled my flight, she said, and I had to come across economy, now, if she had said to me, they tortured me and put pins in my eyes, I could not have been more appalled, I said, Miss Rogers, economy, an artist for your state statue, you know, <laughs> you know how, how, how awful, how much trial for you, you know, <laughs> she said, I couldn't let you down, I couldn't let you down, but never mind, anyway, she did a cross, now she had some secretary when it was about 20, who was fainting with the fatigue and everything, Miss Rogers was breathless about 70 then, was just ready to go and everything, you know, those old movie stars, mate, they had it in and they know what they're about, anyway, she had 20 pieces of luggage as well, an incredible thing, it was all bright pink, and all with GR, monogram. And the reason that she was surrounded by authorities and that at the airport was that a fabulous old guy who worked there said, I saw that luggage come in, he said, and I said, that's Ginger Rogers. When she did MAME, that, that, that same pink luggage, yeah, and he was right, and he got the people there, it was, was, was Ginger Rogers, of course, to that sort of thing, too incredible. Anyway, so, so she had these 20 pieces of luggage. Well, I had a Rolls Royce outside, but there was a driver, there was me, there was Ginger and there was a secretary and 15 pieces of pink luggage did not fit in. I mean, the boot, the, so I had to get a taxi uh, to follow us with the 15 pieces of luggage. Now, she was staying at Claridge's. Now, I bought um, about 20 quid because all the cars and the fence paid for it, the tips and that. Well, the taxi was me a little longer, so I had no money to pay for this taxi. So on the way to Claridge's, I said, can you stop at Jack Crawshaw, who lived uh, off Bayswater and everything? If you could, because I've got no money, and I didn't say it to Ginger Rogers, obviously, I said, you can stop there. So I rang up Jack, who, who came to die, I said, give me some money, give me 50 quid or something, you know, I've got to pay off the taxes and all that. He said, I said, well, that's it. G Ginger Rogers is outside <laughs> in a car, and he looked out the door, and she went, wave, sort of, and he's not quite a wave <laughs> from the back. Well, yeah, I grabbed his money, took her off the carriages, and that sort of thing, too. And uh, now, Mr. Leonard, she said, tell me, she said, um, I bought three dresses here. She said, they know what they're doing, these whole videos. They really did. So I bought three dresses here. She said, now, look, this one, I need to move. When I come in, can I move or am I seen already in one place? I said, no, you can walk from there. I said, well, I'd love Miss Rogers. I said, if you walked, we don't often do this, but if you came in from the back of the auditorium 
walk through the audience and believe you me, the applause for you will cover that. No, she said, I'm sorry. You're looking at my movies? If you shoot me from above, I'm for sure. I'm never for sure I will come in from the wings. Yes, Miss Gorgeous. So she came in from the wings. But now this dress, um, I need to move. Can I move in this dress? I said, yeah, you can, because this has to yeah, you can certainly move, that's the thing. And so that was the way we chose it. I mean, that was a degree of exactitude. That's why they were stars and remained as stars. You know, people came and went, but that lot didn't. They knew exactly what they were doing. They knew the lighting, knew everything about making films. So, there, so that was that fabulous lady. 